San Luis Potosí might not be the most attractive city in Mexico, and I could understand why. There's an overwhelming amount of tagging. There's a terrible infrastructure for the city this size. But San Luis Potosí is a very special place for me, and it's also the birthplace of La Michelada. And if you've never had a Michelada before, you're missing out on Mexico completely. My name is Kevin and I'm with Eat by the Travel. Today we're exploring in the city of San Luis Potosí. Not only are we here to find the best michelada, but we're also here to explore and find out of its origin story. I've mentioned before that my mom is from the state of Veracruz when we got the opportunity to explore her hometown and learn where she's from. Now I get the opportunity to learn about where my dad is from, San Luis Potosí. This is the first time that I'm visiting without my parents and I'm very excited to share this experience with you. I have not been to San Luis Potosí in almost 10 years and before that I used to come every single year. So I look forward to learning how much the city has grown and I look forward to eating and having all the delicious enchiladas potosinas that I miss so much of this dear state. To start our San Luis vlog, we will take you where San Luis Potosí began. 40 minutes away from San Luis Potosí, you have El Cerro de San Pedro. El Cerro de San Pedro is a village located in the middle of the hills. El Cerro de San Pedro is very important to the history of San Luis Potosí and here's why. After the discovery of gold and silver in Zacatecas, Spanish colonizers were on the hunt for more. A Spanish man by the name of Pedro Anda discovered gold and silver in the hills that we now know as El Cerro de San Pedro. Due to the lack of water in the hills, it was impossible for anyone to settle here. But a short distance away was a valley where water was abundant, and that valley is what we now know as San Luis Potosí. The name Potosí was added to San Luis in hopes of yielding as many riches in gold as it had been done in Potosí, Bolivia. El Cerro de San Pedro is a small town that has preserved its churches and some of its establishments. It's a great place to come visit with the family and learn some of San Luis Potosí's history. Now let's take you back to El Centro de San Luis Potosí. We're gonna give you a glimpse of San Luis Centro, then move on to a Michelada tour, and then take you to a very special place for me and my family, Texas. Wait, Texas? Like Texas? Sorry, Jenny, you're just gonna have to wait and see. In case you're wondering what to see in San Luis Potosí, well, there's a lot. So here's a list of all the main plazas and buildings you don't wanna miss out on. This is Plaza del Carmen, one of my favorite spots to come hang out and just watch the Fuente, because, you know, Fuentes are so relaxing. To my right, you have Teatro La Paz, you have a museum right there, and you have a beautiful Baroque church. Uh, I don't know the name, but there's so many churches here. How do I even memorize all of them? Look, check this out, it's so beautiful. You didn't look at the name of the church? No, there's so many Come of them. On, you said be me. I know, but I expected you to know the name of the church. Templo de Nuestra Señora del Carmen. And you have this beautiful Nuestra Carmen del Church Baroque style church. It's one of those churches, you know, the beautiful Baroque Plaza del Carmen Church. No, Señora del Carmen Church. Templo de Nuestra Señora del Carmen. At Plaza de Armas, also home to Jardín Hidalgo, you'll find the beautiful Cathedral of San Luis Potosí. This is also a nice place to hang out and have some ice cream or check out some of the handmade wooden furniture. Just down the block from the Plaza de Armas, you'll find La Plaza de los Fundadores. Plaza de los Fundadores is where San Luis Potosí was founded on November 3rd of 1592. Here you'll find the statue of St. Louis King of France, the king that San Luis was named after. Surrounding La Plaza, there's La Universidad Autónoma de San Luis Potosí, La Parroquia Sagrada, and restaurants. Plaza de Aranzazú is a yellow historic square with an 18th century convent. Now it's home to the Regional Museum Potosino. Next to the museum, there's a popular alley known as El Callejón de San Francisco. El Callejón de San Francisco is known as a hipster area where you'll find a variety of bars and street vendors selling handmade arts and crafts. This alley is one of the oldest in San Luis Potosí. It dates back to 1591 when the Baroque-style Templo and Convento San Francisco was built. Here you are. 
cooking all over for you. Oops, I got thirsty from all the talking. Really? What's in the bars? The Convent of San Francisco is known as the oldest building in San Luis Potosí. If you're looking to shop and walk, La Calle Zaragoza is a great place to check out some of the street vendors and their businesses. At the end of La Calle Zaragoza is La Calzada de Guadalupe. For a nice show in San Luis Potosí, you have La Calzada de Guadalupe, which begins at the end of La Calle Zaragoza, and it goes a mile long all the way to La Iglesia de Guadalupe. If you're here during December 12th for La Virgen de Guadalupe, it would be a really cool place to see the pilgrimages and processions that go on for La Virgen de Guadalupe. All over San Luis you'll find museums. There are approximately 11 museums all over Centro. This is El Museo del Centro de las Artes in San Luis Potosí, a must-see when you come to San Luis. Up until 1999, it was a former prison, but it is now an arts and cultural center for the city of San Luis Potosí. But you know what kind of museo they don't have and they should have? Un Museo de la Michelada. So it's Jenny and our mission to figure out who and how did they invent La Michelada. So let's get to it porque tengo un chingo de sed. San Luis Potosí is so big that we needed some help. So I'm actually I'm on my way to meet up with a local Potosino to help us hunt down for the best Michelada. So I'm meeting up here with Paquito. How are you my friend? We met Paquito at Casa Altero where he prepared for us a bomb michelada. He offered to take us on a tour, so hey, no better way than learning about micheladas than with a local. ¿Qué eres? Mixólogo de... Ah, bartender o cantinero. Perdón. Es todo. So Paquito's gonna take us today on a michelada tour de la ciudad de San Luis Potosí. Así es. Vamos a darle. Vamos a un lugar que es... Básicamente donde preparan una gama de micheladas, que es el tema que vamos a tratar hoy día aquí con mi buen amigo Kevin. Es, eh, bueno, ya les iremos contando la historia de las micheladas, pero tienen una gama de micheladas en las cuales incluyen botanas, cosas dulces, sabores y las clásicas. Bueno, pues estamos en Las Lolas, que es un lugar que se distingue o se caracteriza por tener mucha variedad de micheladas. Hay micheladas que preparan con verdura, con frutas, con gomitas, con dulces o con tamarindos, picante. Y eh, la variedad que estamos viendo aquí en Las Lolas es que tienen así como cuatro especiales, que es la clásica, tienen una que se llama gomichela, tienen una que se llama la taquichela, que la preparan con taquitos de verdura, eh, con tamarindo y chile, está más, bastante bien. Hace agua la boca, güey. Mm. Esta cuando estás crudo, ahí está de poca madre. Pregunta. ¿Una michelada entonces me tiene que lo mato? Mira, es que la michelada en sí estándar eh, lleva solo salsas y limón y sal. Hay otra que es la pura chelada, solamente lleva sal y limón. Y la que lleva clamato, pero de ahí viene la variedad. O sea, de la creatividad de las personas que se dedican a este ramo es como la presentas tu michelada. Puede ser con clamato, con cerveza, con una bebida con baja graduación alcohólica. Y bueno, en este caso eh, la pedimos el clamato aparte para probar con y sin. Pero normalmente una michelada solamente lleva las salsas, el limón y la sal. This is, this is the way we know it back in Chicago. Normally, micheladas in Chicago have clamato in them. Uh, but when I came to San Luis Potosí, uh, it was strange when they brought me out the first michelada because it was black. Uh, this michelada with clamato reminds me back at home. I at first thought the michelada had clamato because it was already red, but he explained that. It doesn't have any clamato, right? Yes. O sea, al principio no tiene nada de clamato, ¿verdad? Esta es más Exacto, difícil. solamente son las salsas, el limón y la sal, que es la original. Ya le agregas el, el clamato y te le da un sabor distinto. Y para un día de resaca o para un día que está haciendo bastante calor, está bastante gusto. From Las Lolas, we headed out to Flamingos to try a different kind of michelada. Si 
te fijas, esta versión de la michelada es totalmente distinta a la que probamos anteriormente. Esta tiene un eh, garnish de sal de mar y tiene dentro del vaso un pepino. O sea, es totalmente distinto. In the case of this michelada, I feel like the beer influences the flavor a lot. This is a blonde ale. So the, the taste in blonde ale compared to a lighter beer like Corona or Victoria changes the, the flavor in the actual drink. But it's very good. I would eat these with some marisco, something light, like some camarones or something. Still not my favorite, but it's very delicious, very refreshing. It was tough to indulge in all these micheladas without my better half. So I asked Paquito for a list for Jenny and I to go and check out some of the best micheladas that he recommends. He sent us out to Raul's, to Par Tampico, and a health club. It's my turn to join in on this michelada action, so we're gonna be checking out a few of Paquito's recommendations together, and then afterwards we'll be letting you know which ones were our favorites. We started off at Raul's, a bar from 1962. For all of our micheladas, we're just gonna be asking them the traditional way, without clamato. So how do you prefer your michelada? With clamato or without? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Next up, we headed out to Bar Tampico, another traditional bar from San Luis Potosí. Feels very old timing, like antique. The original michelada in San Luis Potosí is always a black one. So we'll see what this uh, orange yellow one tastes like. So this michelada is very refreshing. I feel like it has less salt, less spices, this, for me, feels more like a chelada. Uh, just more lime, more lemon, more citrusy with beer in it. Um, but we ordered a michelada, so... This is Bar Tampico's michelada. It's good, it's refreshing. After the long days of work, this will make you a little bit more happier. Not my favorite michelada, it tastes a little watered down. I think it might be because of the beer that we chose. We chose Corona, but they don't always give you a wide variety of options. Normally we like to choose Indio or Modelo or Pacifico or Victoria. <laughs> For this one we chose Corona because Corona is such a light beer. It just kind of tastes kind of watery, so I'm like, eh, I'm not impressed with this one. I was a little confused as to why Paquito took me to a sport complex for this next michelada, but then he explained why. Bueno, la idea de llevarte al, al club deportivo era precisamente que supieras dónde nació esta cerveza, porque pudo haber nacido en cualquier otro lugar, en cualquier otro bar, pero en realidad fue en el establecimiento que estaba dentro del deportivo. Con casi 78 años de su fundación, El Club Deportivo Potosino es uno de los clubs con más prestigio en San Luis Potosí. Que en este club había un socio que se llama Michel Esper. Él era una persona que le encantaba ir al club, hacer uso de todas las instalaciones. Y al término de estas, llegaba al bar que se ubica dentro del deportivo. Pedía su cerveza, siempre pedía que estuviera muy, muy helada y que le dieran limones y sal. Conforme fue pasando el tiempo, en lugar de pedir solo limón y sal, le empezó a agregar condimentos, así como la salsa inglesa, o el jugo Maggi, y eh, pues conforme fue pasando su estancia en el lugar, mucha gente volteaba a ver que podía, por qué pedía estos ingredientes para su cerveza, si la cerveza se tomaba sola. Cuando él le explicó esto era que para darle un poco de versatilidad a la bebida, no que solamente tuviera el sabor a la malta. 
entonces llegaba con el bartender que estaba en ese momento y siempre le decía lo mismo le decía dame mi, mi, mi chela helada mi chela helada entonces se empezó a convertir en un juego de palabras en el cual Michel, que era el inventor de esa bebida que traía varios ingredientes entonces la michelada o la chela helada de Michel Esper es eh, solamente un vaso o tarro escarchado con sal se le agregan los hielos, jugo de limón, las salsas y la cerveza Conforme fue tomando popularidad en el deportivo, hubo gente que le decía ¿Por qué no le pones esto? ¿No le agregas esto? Y empezaron a jugar un poquito con la receta. Empezaron a agregarle pues lo que era el jugo de almeja, empezaron a agregar eh, destilados, empezaron a agregar tequila, le empezaron a agregar vodka, dependiendo de la creatividad de cada persona. Pero eh, normalmente lo que conocemos todo el mundo en San Luis Potosí es la cerveza con las salsas y limón y sal. La michelada fue eso, fue un gusto de una persona que se arriesgó a aderezar la cerveza y cambiarle un poquito el sabor, pero no se iba a dar cuenta que iba a llegar a ser tan popular como lo es en nuestros días. We headed back to Casa Altero where Paquito worked so he could make us another one of his delicious enchiladas. classify Casa Altero as the number one michelada in San Luis Potosí, but I think what's more important than finding the number one michelada is, at least for me, is making sure that you try the Clásica Michelada de San Luis Potosí. I think wherever you go and you have a Clásica for San Luis Potosí, you're going to get the best quality michelada. And that's without the clamato, because I'm sure a lot of people, especially back in Chicago, are used to ordering a michelada and that usually comes with clamato, but not the classic one here in San Luis. So my cousin found out that we were making a michelada vlog and he's like, yo, hold up, I gotta take you to my bar, La Comadre. Here La Comadre, it's a local bar, they got their regular customers, but hey, their micheladas, we're fire. Oh, I could see why your primo likes this one. No wonder he goes every damn day. Good. Michelada clásica. I think this is my winner. This is, I think this is my favorite. I took I it back on what I said at Casa Pero. This is my winner. The cool thing about micheladas here is that you don't need to go to fancy bars or restaurants to get a good michelada. A lot of times they're not even going to be as good. Even the little bars down here with la comadre are good enough. This is really good. I like this one a lot. Before I close out this video, I want to show you El Rancho Tejas. Why you look so nervous? Because my first time driving in the rancho. This is scary. Just wait till your mom finds out you're driving here. Ooh. So this is El Rancho Tejas in San Luis Potosí. This is where my dad was born and raised. I was very fortunate that my parents had the opportunity to bring me here every single year. As a child, I might have not been able to appreciate it as much as I do now. I hope someday I get the opportunity to come back and share my dad's stories of his upbringings here in, here in El Rancho Tejas. It's a very special place for us. It's a very special place for our family. Uh, last year, the year 2020, was a very difficult year for our entire family. So this place brings me a lot of childhood memories. It also makes me a little sad because a lot of the people that lived here are not, no longer here anymore but I am very happy and very fortunate to be able to share this special place with you. Hopefully in the future we will be able to come back and give you a full tour and be able to give you some of the beautiful stories that my dad uh, can share with you all. Thank you so much for joining us on this vlog in San Luis Potosí. We hope that you enjoyed our Michelada tour, a little glimpse of El Centro and a little glimpse that we gave you of my Rancho Tejas. 
se cuidan, se bañan y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Chao.